should we be thinking about ourselves and saying and saying I I trust myself enough where I can be vulnerable and open with people no matter how they receive it or should we hold back who we are or some things about us to protect ourselves or to feel if they're trustworthy enough to have that information yes to the latter really interesting I hear this vulnerable vulnerable I mean nobody one like nobody wants to see it all day long right yeah. Everybody's got their own problems and Absolutely. their own stuff they're dealing with. I will tell you this, though. When people feel too comfortable with you, they will challenge you more. In what ways? They will test you more. They will push back more. The more comfortable people feel with you. Think of it. The people that know you the best in life, uh-huh. they push you back. They push back the most. They'll call you out the most. And sometimes not, not, not in a healthy way, in an unpleasant way. But if you're... There's something powerful with keeping some things about you to you. Mm. You don't have to be an open book. Mm. I know this goes against a lot lot of be vulnerable, be vulnerable. I'm not telling you to be a jerk, and I'm not telling you to conceal everything about you. But what I'm telling you is you need to have a filter. Mm -hmm. Nobody needs to know. People don't need to know everything about you. Keep that stuff to yourself. When you were doing your interviews or interrogations, would you ever, or did you ever become too vulnerable as a, I guess, strategy to try to get the other person to open up and share their vulnerabilities and kind of reveal that they did the thing they did? I think what I just did is I empathized the most. Okay. Because in truth, can I... I can see how you feel about this. I had an experience, you know, I had a Well, if it's a or, criminal investigation, hopefully not. <laughs> oh, you killed or, her? Oh, well, I could see why. <laughs> <laughs> why I felt this in my life or whatever it may be. No, no, because that would be disingenuous. Mm-hmm. So I'll give you an example. Um, there's a difference between tr- pretending I understand and understanding. Empathy is I've I've been there with you. So when you when I came in, I said, Louis, you know, I'm really sorry about your dad, right? Yes. So I've also lost my dad. Yeah. So if I if I said to you, Louis, I'm sorry about your dad, I understand how that feels. Can I say that to you? Do I understand? Mm. If, because my I lost my dad. Right. You would say she lost her father too, so she understands. Now, if I never lost my father. You couldn't say that. And I said that to you. You kind of be like, you don't really know. Yeah. You still have your dad. Yeah. So when you empathize with someone in a scenario where, let's say, you had just lost your dad and I didn't, I would try to empathize. That must be very difficult. I'm sorry to hear that. Now, but not relating it to yourself. Not relating to myself. So the only way you can relate it to yourself and it be genuine is if you experienced the exact same thing the other person did. So in this scenario, yes, you lost your dad. I lost my dad. Yes. So then you would feel genuine. So it would be the same thing when you speak to people. Right. You, so it's it's how you how you say it. So if you if you're not experienced the exact same thing, the best thing to do is say, I'm sorry to hear that. That must be so difficult. I can't imagine. Mm -hmm. I'm here for you if you need anything. You would do something along those lines. Instead of saying, I know how you feel. And trying to then, and this is what you don't want to do. Because when you first told me, actually, I didn't say to you that I lost my dad. Mm -hmm. Because I would take away from what I was sharing with you. I made it now about me. Oh, you lost your dad? Let me tell you about my dad. My dad died too. He he died of cancer and all this stuff. And I would go into that story. It takes away. So it's your story, your narrative, and I'm going to let you just talk to me about it. Mm-hmm. And then if later mine comes up, fine. Sure, sure. So you don't want to make it about you. This is that me, 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 mm-hmm. me syndrome. When people are speaking to you, allow them to own their story. Don't feel that you have to be, oh, yeah, I do the same thing. Oh, yeah, this. They don't, one, they don't typically care. Mm-hmm. Unless you've been through the exact same th- thing and you feel that by bringing that up, that person needs that, fine. Right. But don't but do it. You don't it. even need to, yeah. If you don't need to, time. don't bring it in. Don't don't bring in the noise. Yeah. Let that person's story be their story, because what sure. you're doing is you're bringing in your own stuff. Right. And Give them that moment. Yeah. Let them have that moment. I want to go back to something you you mentioned briefly that I thought would be interesting for people. When you're asking someone, when you want to get information out of someone, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, interrogating a a criminal, whatever it might be, is it more, employee. An employee, yes. Is it more effective to ask direct question, did you do this or no. you did this? Or is it better to ask an open-ended question and see what happens next? 
So direct questions are not good, and this is why. And most people do this. You go in for the kill, so to speak, and they get garbage. <laughs> you get nothing. What do people say? B, they shut you down. Yeah. Nobody, and especially if it's a sensitive topic, they're not going to want to tell you. It's like, did you do it? Yeah, hey, I did. Let me yeah, tell yeah. you, sit down. <laughs> yeah. You want to let people uh, adjust. It's almost like you put their feet in the water, in the pool. Mm-hmm. You, you, your feet, when you go into the ocean, you acclimate to the water. Some people dive in, Sometimes yes. I jump in because it's, <laughs> it's too cold to just to go in. <laughs> but for the most part, the idea is you acclimate. Yeah, and course. then by the time you get in, you're, you're the same temperature. When you speak to people, then that's the way to do it. Mm. And you don't have to get the information in that moment. You want to work on people over time. Mm-hmm. So you want to get admissions, which is pieces of information. If we make it about a crime per se, right? Rather than going, well, did you do this? Did you do this to this person? Did you... Uh, rape this person, kill this person, steal, steal, this, thing. steal this thing. And and I would never say steal. It sounds ugly. Did you take this? Did, did you, you take this? Rape sounds ugly too. I would never say rape or, or, or kill. Kill, I would say, did you did you hurt this person? Mm. Did you, you know, lose yourself? I would use different terms. Interesting. Sounds nicer. Even if somebody lies. Hey man, you're lying to me. Ooh, he loses like, what? I, no. Lewis, nice. you're not, there's something you're missing. There's something you didn't tell me. I feel there's a part of the story I'm missing here. I want but, you to be comfortable enough to tell me. So you would say that? Yeah. yeah. Sounds different. So that's one. Think about the words coming out of your mouth. What do I sound like? And then more importantly, what do they hear when I speak? Not, do, not what do I think I'm saying? Because everyone's like, oh, I just said this. What did I say? It doesn't matter what you think you said. What matters is what they hear right. when you speak. Based off of their viewpoint, their biases, their DNA, their genetic makeup, their their drama, their trauma, all their stuff. Because they bring that in when they communicate. Mm-hmm. So you have to keep that in mind. Are you also thinking about, are you trying to learn about the background of the person before you have a connection or a conversation with them and get as much information on them before? De- Where they're from, who they are, you know. Depends what you want. Yeah. What is your goal? Like, what are you looking to get? Mm-hmm. And obviously, sometimes time's a factor. If you're hiring somebody, I think when you do, here's some tips. When you're doing your job interviews or you're, you're bringing people on or you're working with people, you want to sit them down. You don't want to sit like the way we are here with a table between you and the person. You want an open space. So you've got like uh-huh. two so two put them on the open. sofas, yeah. sit down. That's openness. This is a, a barrier. Uh-huh. It's just it causes a break between us. There's also formality with the table. I feel like I'm being it's more interviewed. professional than as opposed yes. to relaxed. And the thing is this, if you want to know who you're hiring, let's say, or who you're dealing with or who you're bringing into your space, you want openness and you want them to speak to you in an open way. Freely. So you can get all the information. Tell me about yourself. How did you grow up? You know, where are you from? No kidding. What's about this? What, what about that? Now you get them and then you flow into the other questions. But if people feel like they're being interviewed, that they're going to bring that. Mm-hmm. Bring that. So you want to get people to feel comfortable right. and you want to have that openness. Also, when you have a table, it cuts off the lower body. You can't so see some, their triggers. There's, yeah, yeah. there's tells. Uh-huh. There's tells. I could be... crossing their legs. They're fidgety. They're, they're fidgety. Maybe you ask me a question about, <laughs> have you, did you ever get fired from a job? And then I cross my legs as soon as uh-huh. you ask me that question. You're not going to say anything. You're going to take a mental note. Oh. Have you just crossed her legs right when I asked her that question? Mm-hmm. Why? I need to, I need to, sorry, my son. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> I need to, I need to pay attention to that. Yes. Right? So that you want to just take notice. The whole goal is to be curious. Mm-hmm. And so if we can give it a turn, maybe you need to Lewis house yourself. There you go. Yeah. When people come in, you are super curious about them. You care about everybody who comes in, who's coming in. I want to know everything I can about them, that they're willing to share. I want them to feel comfortable to open up. I get a great interview. My viewers love it. Boom. This is like this with everything else. If Mm -hmm. you can bring that level of passion and curiosity with people, everyone's going to be open books. Yes, that's it. Everyone's going to be an open book for you. Don't listen to the garbage people give you. Look at what they show you. Have you seen a Tinder swindler? No, it's on, next on my list. It's like the grooming process. It's and when you watch it from an outsider, you think, "How could this happen?" But like you said, the more you're groomed and you tied into someone romantically and psychologically and emotionally, 